look at that fit. Because that tire is probably from the late 60s, early 70s. So it's older than all of us. Yeah. What in the heck? I honestly don't know why it bubbled, but it... I mean, how much of that is ZDDP? Let's not jump into this, man. Well, Let's just try, you know? try... We don't even know if the brakes work yet. On today's episode of Cars and Cameras, we are finishing up our longitudinally mounted big block Briggs and Stratton mini bike build named the Sidewinder. We are adding brakes, we're changing the gearing for a little bit more pickup and uh, other optimizations. And then we're gonna take it around for a hot lap around the Grand Prix to see how it stacks up up against our other projects. Stick around until the end of the video to watch us do the drawing for our summer 2021 giveaway winner. And finally, Ike and I are on the Hot Rod Power Tour uh, this week in the Midwest. So if you happen to live in Indiana, uh, Ohio, or uh, Missouri, or Illinois, come on out. We're going to be there. We got an old C10 and a couple Honda 70s. Anyway, enjoy the video. So we're starting things off on the fenders. I'm doing the rear one and we're going for like, what'd you call it? The chopped and bobbed look? Yeah, the bo bobber look real real short at the end. So the, the tire's exposed at the back of the bike. More right, and it's more forward so it covers the clutch. Yep, clutch protection and some butt protection. Charles is working on the front. What do you got, man? Well, let's see. We want it clocked back enough so the, the fender actually works and protects the, uh, the cooling system on the engine. But let's see, we have this cross piece and I'm gonna go from side to side, drill two holes and space it up so the fender is actually on top of that, kind of hovering. So that way, that way it's removable if it ever gets damaged or needs to be painted or something. I just need to add one brace down to the engine plate and the rear fender will be finished. Look at that fit up against the clutch. It's tight back here, folks. It is tight. Rear fender is done. I just welded the brackets to the, uh, the fender. Would have been cleaner if I had bolted them, but it's the Sidewinder, baby. That's a tight bolt. That's the front axle. All right, now we just need to get under there and drill a hole up through the bottom. And it'll be bolted on the bottom too. And we'll have a rear fender. Can you get it done? Oh, man. oh, he's getting her done. Oh, you got it. Hey, oh. All right, so now it's a good time to tell you that we need to now replace the front wheel and bearing. And Probably. Do uh, you have one? Uh, uh, well, I mean, sports? you know what, we got the, uh, the go power, the nice chrome wheel with the, but I don't know if we have a tar. You take a quick look. Oh, yeah. look at that. We can take a quick look. Yeah, why not? All right, we'll, we'll look into it. Cause that tire is probably from the late sixties, early seventies. So it's older than all of us. Yeah. And it's dry and both of rotted. Both of us combined. Yeah. yeah. I love the uh, tread, the, the like, I don't know. It kind of looks clover like the tread yeah it's very very vintage very vintage so uh we'll we'll go look upstairs and see what we can find for a new new rim oh boy uh-oh can, yeah, can you not get the uh oh, oh billy all right sometimes they're just cans that you don't want to open because there are worms in there <laughs> There's I think he's right. There's definitely some worms. I think he's right. I'll tell, I'll tell you what. How about just putting some nuts uh, on that bracket? I'm just going to weld, I'm gonna weld some. T yeah. And, and and be done with it. That's going to be. that. You know, that's. How, yeah. We're yeah, going to do that. Yeah. We're going we'll to pretend that it never happened. I didn't do this at all. Yeah. We are working on uh, brakes and re-gearing on this sidewinder bike yeah. so uh 
What do we got, Charles? So we're going from what was it? It's a 18, 18, tooth. 18 teeth to 14 teeth on the one inch shaft on the magic box. So we're going to cut that tack off onto the set screw and, of course, you know, shorten the chain. Yep. And for the brakes, it's going to be on this side. Yep. Luckily, it's small enough we can still get to our valve stem. See, originally we were thinking about putting a band brake on the, on uh, the clutch. clutch, which would have been really cool. We've never done that before. I've seen it done. I, I, I know it can be yeah. done. But if you lose a chain... No brakes. No brakes. Yeah, so we're I, just kind of going on the safety side, and we're going to put it right directly on the rear axle. Yeah, we're going to try and squeeze it in right here. And we're definitely going to have a foot brake... Yep. Foot and uh, I don't know if if I feel a little froggy, maybe I'll make a little handbrake too. But mm -hmm. foot brake is the main thing. We've got the gear on the on the jack shaft. Or Don't the, pay it. The, yeah, I've not got a it jack loose. shaft. The magic, magic box. Magic, magic box. box has been changed out, and he's making adjustments to the chain. And since we threw this thing together, just trying to get it going and whatnot, we didn't. We skipped a step. Uh, the adjustment for raising and lowering the magic box, tensioning both chains. It works great, but slipping the bolts in and out is kind of a pain. So what we've made is we've made some shims to go in and out. So when we loosen the bolts, we can just pull them out and adjust the chain a little bit easier. So, yeah. Sounds good to me. So we got the drum, but we have a band brake and it's gonna have a foot brake on this vehicle. And hopefully it's gonna work fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, John is inside the house. He is writing up a program to make up some tabs to weld right there on the frame to run a bolt through for our little band brake. And then we can run the linkage from the band brake forward to the uh, foot pedal. So I'm going to just Sounds sit here. Good. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to watch Charles work because I can't. <laughs> we had to put these in so when we tensioned this it didn't crush the two it was it was it's a mess but you know what sometimes the best that's that's how the best projects happen I'm telling you looking right. good charles and we'll put the shim in there just like that look at that and then you can tighten it up tighten and it up. the chain will be tight once yeah. again so we've uh, run into a little bit of a problem with the chain on this side the chain hits the frame right here so we are going to get a sawzall and we're going to cut right there and right there and we're going to make a little area for the chain to kind of pass through and the reason why i'm doing this is because the uh the tire is centered up right now yeah. in this frame i think we had it a little bit off before but when we added this we added the brake drum brake it, and band. it yeah. centered the wheel, which made a little issue with the chain. Yeah, and that's the and frame. that's the easier option because if we go to modify this side, then we're gonna have clearance issues for our brakes. For our brake, yeah. And yeah, it just it, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So we're gonna cut this section out, and we're gonna add some metal to it. That's absolutely my thought. So uh, let's get to cut and Charles. We got two types of fire going in the shop. Charles yep. is torching the frame on the mini bike for chain clearance, because that was a problem. And I fired up a Crossfire Pro to make some brackets um, to mount our brake band mount to the chassis tube. No Check it out. Yeah. I didn't know he he'd been holding out on us. I know. Uh, I'll uh. Just watch the seat. Watch the seat in the filter. Oh. I need more heat. Cover. Yeah. 
I don't know what these guys are doing. But I've got all kinds of brackets cut out. We only need two of them. I just cut out extra of everything. Anytime we make something like this, we can put it on the shelf and I don't have to fire up the machine again. But they turned out great. Look at that. So we're gonna weld that onto the frame. We're gonna have a brake bracket. Every time we do an oil change on a small engine, we add a splash of ZDDP oil treatment to help preserve the camshaft, correct? That's right, that's right. What in the heck? I honestly don't know why it bubbled, but it... I mean, how much of that is ZDDP? It shouldn't be that much. I hope not. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. See, oh, it's, the, uh, it's still not wanting to take it, but... I, I just... Okay. A little bit at the time. I made a mess, and it's still making a mess. Well, it doesn't, it, um... I see you got the tabs welded in. Yeah. They are looking good. I'm gonna touch it up just a little bit. All right. And, uh, and then we're gonna be running the top piece of the brake somehow to this pedal right here, which is off of a Honda 919. Uh-huh. No idea where we got that from, but, uh, just kidding. It was fair. It was fair. Yeah, thank you, fair. Fair. Good. Yeah. All our brake parts in today's video are from GoPowerSports.com. Whether you have uh, a drum and band like this, or a disc brake setup, hydraulic or mechanical, they will have what you need for your mini bike, go-kart, or buggy project. They also have a mini bike live axle kit, which is close to what we have here. Ours is more cobbled together, but they have a live axle kit uh, for a mini bike specifically that comes with everything between either a slick or a knobby tire, just like this one right here, a wheel, uh, a sprocket hub, uh, a mechanical um, brake, disc brake. It comes with sprocket hubs and an axle itself. So if you're looking to go in a different direction with your mini bike, uh, a live axle kit for a mini bike might be a good move for you. So you can check out all these parts, brake parts and the live axle kit and the links in the description of this video. And of course, anytime you place an order with gopowersports.com, let them know that Cars and Camera sent you. All right, so this just needs to be shortened a little bit, this bolt I have. We need to drill a hole in there and put a pin or even a lock nut on the outside. And now we just need to figure out how to connect it to, where to go? This up front here. So it'll pull, nope. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so it does. Y yeah, you know, you know what I'm Pulling on the you linkage and it'll pull on the, uh, yeah. The band, the band and stop you. But we are right there, dudes. Test so drive. So Hot close. Lap. Big block. Uh, what we've got, John is working on something right there. I'm going to show y'all what we got. Charles is over here working on the pivot part uh, Let's see. for the uh, yeah. for foot brake. Going to so, weld yeah. that on. <laughs> you all right yeah, over I'm there, bud? All right. See, so that's, he's that's, gonna, that's what we need. That's right what there. he's got. So John is building a little pivot point right here where this lever right here is going to attach to the pivot point and it's going to rock forward Dang. and uh, the other pivot end of the pivot point is going to be more inside the frame which is going to line it up perfect with the rear brake uh, band and we'll have working brakes. As long as John can hurry up. I'm working on it, man. I'm working on it. Woo! I was able to reach my hat with my right hand oh. and turn it around. Got it. Yep. Are we good? Yep. All right. Looking good. I'm all finished up with my bracket here. So Charles had to make a little modification to our pedal. Yes. Got to do some gap welding, but that's okay. It's got the sticker to prove it. Sticker. And uh, brakes are gonna be done. Ready? Yep. Yeah. That's it, man. Awesome. Just gotta connect it there and then back to the band. We'll be good to go. Awesome. Ready for a test drive. Yeah, man. It's the end of the evening and the brakes work on the uh, Sidewinder. 
Um, tomorrow morning, we're going to be taking this thing for a test drive. I won't be here. Me and Charles are because Ike has physical therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Catch y'all in the morning. Good morning, everybody. Got brakes on the Sidewinder, re-geared, oil change with ZDDP. I say it's ready for a hot lap, wouldn't you? Oh yeah. How about how about just a test drive first, but that's let's not right. let's not jump into this, man. Well, let's just try you know? try. We don't even know if the brakes work yet. That, so that's you know true. It's time for a ride. Put fuel on, choke it, hold the brake. Oh yeah, like, I love how it moves sideways. Yeah. Now you can very easily lock up the rear tire. Good. So that, that and that's I good. mean that's good and bad, but very good to me because like if you can just you know ease your foot on the brake, you can actually feel the bike slow down. So good. I'm I'm happy with that. Good. So good job, guys. <laughs> Sweet. Hot lap. Yeah. Well, test test lap. <laughs> hot lap. Because I definitely like coming out of there about right where before the cone it it picked the front wheel up just a little bit. So. Ike is back from his physical therapy. And in that vein, I'm gonna keep this to a warm lap. No one else needs to go to the hospital anytime soon. So uh, I mean, it's a big block cruiser, race bike, burnout machine, not really a racetrack. That's enough excuses. Let's uh, do this hot lap. All right. Things pretty quick off the line. Yes, the gearing change was good. I didn't, you know, the clutch. I, it's it, it's gonna be happy with us with what we did. It's a it's a pretty wicked machine. And and the acceleration once the clutch locks in, cool. it's pretty strong. I, I can't wait to get it out on some like like paint swap meet or something like that. You know, uh -huh. some flat pavement. And but I mean, I know we're not supposed to go fast there, but we got to find something like that to where we can really open it up on some flat pavement. Right, because, right. Oh, here. Well, here he comes. Well, it better be about 58 right now. Uh, it just crossed the minute mark. Man. So. What is it? He did it in a 110.29. Okay, that's not terrible. No. Especially since it was just a hot lap, but. Yeah. Or a mild lap. Mild lap? He we'll wasn't... tell him 118. Huh? 118. Oh, tell him a 118? 118, yeah. Oh, okay. All right, boys. Yep. Are y'all ready to learn your time? I'm ready to hear the time. Okay, I, 118. It was a 118? 118. Oh, you're guessing a 118. I wish I was. What? It was 124. You don't know, dude, he's rolling to the time. 130? All right. You wanna know it? Yeah, what was my time? I do know the time, actually. <laughs> it's, it's a one. Okay. One. Oh, okay. Zero. Ho! Oh! I mean, you are on the, yeah. Still on the wall, You're still on the yeah, wall, right. but you know. So that means I'm uh, 11, 12, 13th place. Wall of shame. Wall of shame. It's not a race bike. 
No. This has been a fun build. It's, yes. Yeah. What else should we do with mini bikes? We built a mini bike with the engine sideways. I don't think we should paint it. I think we should leave it exactly the way it is. I we re geared the thing so, like, it still slips a lot. And then when the clutch engages, it just does that. It's wild. Yeah. Um, Sidewinder, guys. Yeah. Thanks for tuning into the series. Uh, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe for future content from Cars and Cameras. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Pick up our latest t-shirt. I break stuff. Cars and Cameras yeah. Stunt School. Uh, Cars-cameras.com. So it's time to pick a summer 2021 giveaway winner. Again, this uh, this giveaway was for a brand new Rascal mini bike from GoPowerSports.com. We had nearly a thousand entries, I think. We had a ton of orders, over 500 orders. Uh, and we sold out of our Sidewinder logos and we have like 70 more somewhere around here. So there's our merchandise right there. Um, Ike's keychain. Yep. Ice cream chain, yeah. There are the other 70 Sidewinders. Now is your last chance to get the classic Mini Mayhem tee. We only have two smalls left. We're going to be replacing it with a with a new, uh, new and improved Mini Mayhem for Mini Mayhem, which we have coming up later this fall. We're going to announce the date very soon. Uh, but if you want the OG Mini Mayhem, now's your last chance. So let's pick a winner. Oh, oh wait. Oh, oh, no. oh. And I'm going for one. I think I got one, and it's the handwritten one. Taylor, Taylor, really we got well. 1980. That was a good year. <laughs> Look, 1980. Yeah, 1980. Taylor, you got some small handwriting, dude. He, he it's the old like man handwriting. Let me see it. You know what they say about a man's handwriting? What do they say? <laughs> the smaller it is, the harder it is to read. Okay, that'll work. <laughs> All right, so congratulations, 1980. You want a 1980s name? Yeah. Stefan Broadbent. Congratulations. Interesting. <laughs>